Yeah, I should grab one of them. So in today's video, I'm going to be giving you guys a one month postpartum update recovering from a C-section. And also, what I use to help me through this recovery. tuning in my name is Poe Nicole I just recently had a baby girl named Berkeley one month ago at the time of recording this video I am four weeks and some days postpartum um, I did have a repeat c-section I also have a seven-year-old son where I had an emergency c-section so with Berkeley this was a scheduled repeat c-section when i say scheduled it's to an extent i have some notes down here so if you guys see me looking down it's because i have notes so let me just tell you guys like but i've been just so scattered brain so it's been kind of challenging getting things done focusing here i am if it's all over the place i apologize but i'm gonna do the best i can and give you guys as much information as i can since this was a requested video um okay. about my c-section it was like i said it was a planned c-section meaning that it was not an emergency so with the c-section you pretty much don't have a choice but to get an epidural or a spinal in my case i got an epidural with a spinal if you guys hear anything Berkeley's over there in her bassinet so i'm trying to get this video recorded while she's still for her now um so i got an epidural and spinal um like i was saying that the spinal is just like an additional step they can take once you already have your epidural so it's not an additional poke or anything the type of incision that i had it is a bikini cut so it's cut really low um and they close my incision with stair stair strips and glue and of course when you get a c-section um you know they do have to cut through several several layers i believe it's like six or seven different layers so internally i do have stitches sutures whatever they're called but to actually close my incision on the outside i just have glue and stair strips so and with the stair strips um i'm four weeks postpartum all of my stair strips are off I didn't get all of them off until about three weeks and I actually pulled those off myself. Um, so with the incision and the stair strips and the glue, um, you are able to shower. Um, I still have not got to take a bath y'all and that is killing me because I am a bath person. I take baths every day. So for the last month I've been having to take showers. The way that you care for your incision um is you can wash it you can get the stair strips wet they will start to lift but mine i actually had to peel off and it like i said it wasn't until three weeks because my incision was really tender and then i was also afraid of it like me taking the stair strips off and then like the incision coming open or anything like that so i waited until three weeks to take all of mine off um so yeah you can shower you can get the strips wet. <clears throat> what they want you to do is like pat dry it. Um, and then you also can get a blow dryer and put it on the cool setting to dry them as well. What I used to do is I have a little um, moment. So back to what I was saying. I have a little fan on my nightstand. So what I would do is after I would get out of the shower, I would just go stand in front of that fan to um, dry my stair strips after I got out of the shower. At, at this point into my recovery, I feel like I'm about 75 to 80% back to feeling like normal. Not 100%. My stomach is, okay, so not where my incision is, but my actual stomach is sore. It's like tender. So it comes and goes with how severe it is, but it's still tender. Where my incision is, that's pretty much numb so I don't remember how long it took with my previous c-section to get the feeling back there but I also think emotionally I'm not all the way back to where I was prior to delivery because of 
this whole coronavirus stuff being locked in the house it's like it's really starting to take a toll on me so yeah but other than that everything is good 75 to 80 percent back to feeling like myself since delivering okay y'all like i said i've tried doing this video i don't know how many times so we're just gonna have to do this with all right, so now I'm going to tell you guys about the actual things I needed to help me with my recovery at home. Um, the first thing were the pins. So in the hospital, they give you these mesh underwear after delivery. You can just like tear them off. So if anything gets on them, they're disposable. You can just throw them away. For the first maybe day or two, I used the mesh underwear. But once in the hospital, once I was able to get up and start showering and walking around, getting dressed um, I actually start using the pins and that was really good for my incision since they're so high-waisted it did not sit on my incision so even if you don't get the pins um, any type of underwear that you need if you are going to be recovering from a c-section make sure they're high waist so they do not actually sit on your incision inside of the pins I did also use the pads as far as bleeding just regular long pads for bleeding another thing pain medicine i know a lot of people they are afraid to take the pain medicine because it can cause constipation but let me tell you take the pain medicine okay i'm at home they prescribed me tylenol 3 and also ibuprofen 800 milligram uh, i think i took it for about 10 days and yeah i really did need it i eventually took all of them so like I took all the Tylenol 3, I took all of the ibuprofen. So sometimes I would take both. Um, you have to rotate taking the ibuprofen and Tylenol. Some days I would just take ibuprofen. Sometimes I would just take Tylenol. Honestly, the, the ibuprofen, ibuprofen actually helped um, more than the Tylenol. It seems like it seems like the Tylenol just made me sleepy. The Tylenol 3 just made me sleepy. So hey meds, the Depends. Oh, and also um, for the incision, the hospital gave me this pad that I would place over my incision inside of my underwear. I also continue to experience sweating at night, um, even after I had Berkeley. So during my pregnancy, I sweated so much. This pad to keep the um, incision dry, I would put it in there because when I was sweating, I didn't want it to be just like wet or sweaty so i did have that in there to absorb that so, i am not breastfeeding berkeley is formula fed so in order to get my milk to dry up i use cabbage you're going to need to have a good sports bra to keep compression on your boobs um and then you just buy a head of cabbage wash it off um, i put mine in the refrigerator to get it cool and then just stuff in your bra um, I would sleep like that and I would wake up and the cabbage was just shriveled up. That is so painful having your milk come in. My boobs were so huge y'all and hard like rocks. So that was really painful. The best thing I can tell you is just to get that cabbage, put it in a sports bra, um, and do not give your boobs any type of stimulation at all because when you stimulate your boobs, that actually causes more milk to be produced. So don't even touch them. Um, they even told me like not to even let like um, hard water run on them because that's a type of stimulation. So that little phase is rough trying to get your milk to dry up, but yeah, use cabbage. The next thing is gonna be a stool softener. Like as I mentioned about the pain medicine, that can cause a delay with you actually going to go poop. I believe it has to do something also with your whole gastro system slowing down due to the surgery. Um, so there is a delay in pooping from a C-section. They did give me a stool softener in the hospital, but as soon as I came home, I started taking the max dosage that I could. I believe it was three a day to ensure that once I was able to go, that it would I wouldn't be constipated. Just the thought of having to go and having an incision and you know, oh my goodness. But take a stool softener, it helps tremendously. And also drink lots, lots, lots of water. So 
this time going to the restroom was a breeze compared to the first time because I just was not educated on what I needed to be doing. So drink a whole bunch of water and take you a stool softener to prepare yourself for that. Also, what has helped me tremendously is a heating pad, y'all. I have been having some major back pain. Like, from this epidural this time, I don't know if it's because I got the spine, I don't know. Oh, so I um, sleep with a, a heating pad, and I will actually rotate between placing it on my back and also on my stomach at night. Another thing, a step stool. So, my bed is, it's not extremely high, but we have step stools in our bathrooms for Dallas. Um, so, what I did is I got one of them, and I put it on the side of my bed to help me get in and out of the bed. Because it's really hard getting up and down from a laying position, because you don't really want to use your abdominal muscles. So... It was a struggle, but the step stool definitely helped. So get you a step stool to help you get up and down out of the bed. I know a lot of people, they sleep in recliners or on the couch. We don't have a recliner, so I was in the bed. and My bed is the most comfortable for me, honestly. Another thing is also, um, it's a good moisturizer for your stomach. I know a lot of people, they worry about like moisturizing to prevent stretch marks from um appearing during pregnancy but after pregnancy get you a good moisturizer for your stomach to actually help with your stomach actually shrinking back down to its normal size i use um, a collagen substance and also a retinol substance the last and final thing that helped me so so much that i did not have with my first c-section recovery is a belly binder. I had no clue that these things existed. When I say belly binder, I know some of you just like me was like, why would you wanna put like a, a binder, a belly binder on your stomach if you have an incision? Y'all, I thought the same thing, but they started placing this belly binder on me um, when I was in the hospital immediately after delivery, so I couldn't even feel it when they were doing it. Once the pain medicine started wearing off, it was already on. And when I would take it off, you could feel the difference, y'all. This belly binder, what it does is it helps to like keep everything in place and tight. It's like a support belt. If I didn't have the belly binder on and I would try to get up, it felt like my insides was just like falling because I didn't have the support. I literally wore that belly binder for two, two to three, two and a half weeks straight because it provided so much support and comfort for me without this it just literally it was so painful it felt like so much pressure like everything was just falling when i would stand up so get you a belly binder if the hospital does not provide you one i am going to show you guys this one that i actually ordered off of amazon i'll link it down below i want to help give you the support like i was telling you about and also help your uterus um contract has a third piece to get your hips to like shrink back down because I know y'all heard of child bearing hips. So um, hips be a little wide after you have a baby. One of the pieces that will help your hips. Oh, so one yeah. more thing I wanna tell you guys about is um, my postpartum appointment. As of right now, we're pretty much doing telemedicine across the board. So I haven't actually seen my doctor in person since delivering. A week and a half after delivery, I did have a televisit with my doctor. Um, she basically, you know, pretty much asked how I was feeling, if I wanted to be on birth control, um, asked about postpartum depression, and then she scheduled me for my six week appointment where I will actually go in so she can see my incision, make sure everything is healing well and stuff. So yeah, that's how that's going. Um, I hope you guys found this video helpful. Like I said, a lot of these things were completely different from my recovery the first time. And honestly, this recovery has been harder for me. And until next time, goodbye. Bye, y'all.